In this video, I'm going to use Blender to develop a simple cup form for 3D printing using spiral vase mode, which is a kind of simplified mode of 3D printing that I think can be really useful for anyone just getting started with 3D printing. So um, opening up Blender here, this happens to be version 3.3. I'm going to click on General. And what I'm going to do to start is delete this default cube. So I'm just going to um, hit the Delete key on the keyboard. And I want to start with something really simple. There might be many, many ways to make a cup in Blender. I'm, in fact, I'm sure there are. Um, but the way that I like to do this and the way that I like to teach this is to begin with um, a simple shape like a circle. So I'm going to go to Add Mesh Circle. I'm in object mode here. So Add Mesh Circle. And maybe just to clean up the scene, uh, there is a light um, over here. And there is a camera here, and I'm just going to turn off the visibility on them so I can focus on this. And you'll see that when I added circle, there's this little flyout menu down here um, that often uh, occurs when you do something in Blender. And so um, it has a number of vertices here. Uh, this circle is made up of 32 vertices. So if I move this slider, you can see um, that I could move this down or I could move this up and it would become more or less faceted. For this particular project, I'm going to select 12. You could select um, whatever number you're comfortable with, but I feel like 12 would be a good uh, starting point for this. OK, so having uh, created this circle, added this into our scene, I want to extrude this up in order to make a volume. And so in order to do that, I'm going to switch to edit mode. I can either do that by pressing tab on the keyboard, or I can go up here to the upper left and click on the different Blender modes with my object selected, and I can click on Edit Mode. And you'll see that everything sort of changes. Instead of just rendering this circle, now I see all these little individual points, and that's because I'm in Vertex Select Mode, this first option up here. I can also um, use Edge Select, which would change the way this looks a little bit. In this case, I can't use Face Select because we have not yet created any faces. So I'll go back to Vertex Select by clicking on it or by typing the number one on the keypad. And so what I'd like to do is take these vertices and extrude them straight up. Um, so I can do that by typing E on the keyboard for extrude. And you'll see um, once I have tapped E that wherever my cursor goes, the extrusion follows. I probably don't want it to go in a really um, kind of random orientation like this. So I'm also going to type uh, the letter Z or just tap the letter Z on the keyboard and that will constrain this extrusion to the Z axis. So again, my idea here is to make a simple sort of cup form, and I'm just going to pull this up to whatever height I think is appropriate for the design, and I'll left click, and now I have made a very simple uh, cylinder. One thing that is uh, useful to know is if I wanted to select all of the vertices in one of these loops, one way to do that would be to, um, with select highlighted here, to just left click and create a box. Um, but sometimes that can be hard to do when your um, scenes get a little bit more complicated. So another way to select that whole ring would be to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and left click, and that will select um, all the connected um, vertices in this loop. So again, if I just left clicked on this, I would only get one uh, vertex. But if I click uh, or hold down Alt and left click, it'll select that whole ring. So looking at the bottom of this, I probably want my cup to have a more narrow bottom than uh, the top. And so I can type S on the keyboard to scale this. And once I do that, wherever I move my cursor, this will make it um, sort of wider or more narrow. And for now, I'll just keep this perhaps uh, about like that. So I have now a very simple tapered cylinder. And the next thing I might think about doing is Perhaps I want this to have more variation than just being narrow at the bottom and wide at the top. Maybe I want to alter the form a little bit more. So I'm going to use this loop cut tool. And you'll see that by default, it just follow, finds itself right in the middle of the form. Um, so it's sort of uh, my cursor moves over and it sort of highlights where this loop cut might be made. I left click and that loop cut has been created. It might be that I want it right there. Or it might be that I'd like to move it. If I want to move it, I can click on this edge slide um, uh, icon here. And that gives me a little handle that allows me to move that cut in space, um, which might be really useful um, as I'm sort of designing this. So I'll leave it somewhere close to the middle where it was. 
And again, I can type S for scale. And you see that I can move this out. I can move it in and I can alter the design this way. So maybe for now, I'll move this out a little bit. And you could make as many loop cuts as you want to make uh, in order to have a composition that is a little bit more complex um, or to add uh, you know, more curvature or you know, just to define the shape a little bit better. So I'll play around with this a little bit, add a couple more loop cuts and play around with my form that way. I'm going to keep this pretty simple for now. So I'm happy with this design. Um, I have not bothered making a bottom or a top for this. And for this particular project, I'm not going to need to. So I'm really just thinking about the profile, the silhouette of this cup form, not thinking about how thick it is, not thinking about the um, top and bottom surfaces. So I'm fairly happy with this design um, as it is, but I can do uh, more with it. So I'm going to press tab to go back into object mode. I could also click up here uh, and go back to object mode. And you can see that now, instead of illustrating all those vertices, I can kind of see this whole object uh, as it is. So obviously this is very heavily faceted with um, the 12 vertices and the one, two, three loop cuts. Uh, so something I might want to do to make this a little bit more rounded and smooth and subtle uh, is that I can click on the modifier tools here. So there's this little wrench on the right hand side that says modifier properties. I'm going to left click on that and I'm going to left click again on add modifier. And the modifier that I'm thinking of here is a subdivision surface. As soon as I left click on this, you can see the whole character of this form changes. It has broken this into many more uh, panels or facets. And if I click on this levels viewport, and I increase the number of levels, those will become smaller and smaller, sort of finer and finer. You do want to be a little bit careful here. If I just keep clicking uh, higher and higher, uh, eventually I might create something that is hard for the computer to render and also uh, maybe has many more facets and much more resolution than a typical uh, commercial or a consumer 3D printer could handle. Uh, so I'll leave this for now at something like three. And because this is a modifier, um, I have the ability to toggle its display. Um, so I can left click here on this little blue television set icon, and I can see what that looks like without the modifier or with the modifier on. Obviously, it's a fairly dramatic difference there. One thing that's really nice about the way that uh, Blender works is that I can go back into edit mode now. And you can see that my original um, geometry is a little bit like a skeleton here. And I can still modify this more complex subdivided form with um, the simpler um, vertices, just the, the few vertices that exist in the model. So uh, prior to adding the modifier. So I can, again, uh, hold down Alt and left click on this ring. I could type S for scale. And now when I scale this, you can see that it's changing um, the way that this looks, but that is influenced also by the um, modifier that I have applied here, the subdivision surface modifier. So perhaps I want to, um, you know, continue to change that. So for now, um, I'll try and resist the urge to continually uh, alter this, um, but I will um, consider this done. And maybe I will add one more level of subdivision just to make that a little bit more smooth. I think that should be plenty of detail. Uh, for printing something the size of a cup on a typical um, consumer grade uh, extrusion 3D printer. And I want to go ahead and save this uh, as well as uh, export it in a format that could be useful for 3D printing. So um, what I would recommend here would be um, to export this as an STL file. So when I click on that, I can give this a title. And I want to make sure that I have apply modifiers checked over here. That will make sure that the subdivision surface modifier that's running here um, will be reflected in the exported model. And if I had many objects in the scene, I might want to click on selection only. Uh, at the moment, the only object visible uh, in my scene is my cup. So I don't have to worry about that right now. So I will click export STL. And that has been exported. 
Next, I'm going to open up uh, Prusa Slicer. And I work with uh, plastic printers that are Prusa brand printers. And so Prusa Slicer works really wonderfully with them. I also uh, use Prusa Slicer with the sort of custom one-off uh, ceramic printers that I work with. And uh, because Prusa, is, Prusa Slicer is open source and very adaptable, I've been able to make that work really well, even though that printer is something that I made and it's kind of a one-off. So for now, um, I want to open up this file. You might uh, notice I did not ascribe any kind of um, scale to the cup as I was designing it in Blender. I'm going to manage the scale here in Prusa Slicer. You could be very specific in Blender about the size, um, but for this exercise, I'm, I'm choosing not to do that. Um, it's asking me if this is made in inches. That's fine. Um, I can toggle between inches and millimeters by ticking this box here. And you can see uh, a little preview of what this looks like. And at the moment, this is about 70 millimeters tall, which would be about um, 2.7 inches tall, which is not very large. So I'm going to make this a good bit larger. Let's try maybe 130 millimeters, which would be uh, just over five inches tall. And I like the size of that. That looks good to me. And I can see uh, the object placed right in the center of the print bed for the Prusa uh, Mark III. And what I'd like to do now is prepare this for printing by um, clicking the Slice Now button here. And when I do that, you're going to see that the preview has assumed that I want this to be solid at the top and the bottom. And so there are a few perimeter layers and then there's a solid top and bottom. And inside of this, if I pull down, uh, you'll see there's all kinds of infill here, a grid of infill material. So I do not want to print in this way today, um, but that is um, what the slicer is sort of doing by default. And so what I'd like to do is I want to use what's called spiral vase mode, which I think is a really wonderful way to have a really simplified printing process that illustrates just a single tool path and hopefully can introduce people to the idea of 3D printing if you're not familiar with it uh, in a way that's really sort of straightforward. So I'm going to go to my print settings in Prusa Slicer and there's an option here for spiral vase and I'm going to click on that and it's going to let me know that spiral vase mode requires one perimeter, no top solid layers, no fill density, no support material, um, and it's going to disable detect thin walls. And so, yes, I'm OK with all of that. Um, those are the sort of um, parameters within the spiral vase mode that um, make it work. And so now when I go to slice this, you see that it is a much more simplified model. It is, in fact, um, a base followed by just one continuous spiral all the way up. And so as I bring this up and down, you can see that it's previewing this model as just uh, a simple sort of spiral from the bottom to the top. And that will yield a really delicate print that is only the thickness of the print nozzle, which in our case uh, with a stock uh, Prusa I3 will be 0 0.4 millimeters. And that will be a very delicate and flexible um, print. But I also think that it can be a really beautiful way to visualize a simple form like this and also to just see how one single tool path kind of um, can be uh, generated, can be used to generate a complex form. So I'm happy with this. And the last uh, step that I need to do in the slicing process is to export the G code. And G code is uh, the file. Um, it is, it is the, the language that we use to control the printer. Um, so it's very much almost like a series of uh, mapping directions for the printer. Start here, finish here, go at this speed, make this turn, do this next procedure. So G-code files aren't fun to edit, uh, but they're wonderful and they're specific to the machine that is going to be uh, printing. So in this case, um, I'm setting this up for a Prusa uh, i3 Mark III S+. Plus. I'm going to be using um, Prusa PLA. And I've chosen uh, for my print settings a 0 0.2 millimeter layer height. I'm going to go ahead and save this and begin my print. And here you can see in a time lapse um, two examples of printing a spiral vase cup using a clear filament and um, just how that kind of winds a single very skinny 
strand of extruded filament around until the form uh, has completed. And finally, a still image showing this very kind of delicate um, and elegant way of using spiral face mode to make a print.